Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time when I say amazing, it is really amazing and not just good, okay? So look at this beautiful magic trick we are going to create today. And you think, hey man, is this wrong? I thought this is a Cinema 4D tutorial, but this is obviously done with Houdini. No, sorry, then you are wrong. Because now in Cinema 4D 2023, you can create all of these crazy cloth transformation morph effects. And honestly, the new simulation tools, they just open up so many windows to go just crazy with it. So I think we should just have some fun with the new cloth engine in Cinema 4D 2023 and build something awesome like this one. Maybe I should mention that here on YouTube, we will keep it a little bit more basic, but then later on Patreon, I will release probably another lesson where I will go more into the details, talk about the materials, the lighting and all of the good stuff. But for now here on YouTube, I will just give you the basics, how you can build that stuff, and then you can just go crazy with it. All right, let me just recap some stuff here. Let's just watch some renderings again. So also as a still frame, this looks quite beautiful. You can see See how this one is growing over the surface of this chair and is transforming into something inflated and really clothy. It's just an amazing effect and of course you have to work with the lighting to get the beautiful wrinkles and it just looks good. But overall this is such a powerful technique. All right. So here I just wanted to show you some renderings. Maybe you like to have it more detailed with the texturing or you want to keep it more simple. So it's up to you. Anyway, what I also wanted to mention is that right now for the content on my Patreon in November, I'm planning to do a course about this one. So this is one of my latest art pieces and this is just crazy. I think the possibilities that are opening up right now with the cloth engine are just crazy. So let me just quickly show you this animation. And I think this is just so beautiful. So I have the, the ribbons, this inflated craziness and all of it is just working beautifully together without intersections, collisions. So really amazing stuff that you can do now in Cinema 4D. And um, yeah, I can just repeat myself and say over and over again that I think it's amazing. Honestly, previously, I was just not able to do stuff like this in Cinema 4D. And I'm super happy right now that with the release of 2023, I am finally able to go really crazy with the cloth body, the soft body, this inflated stuff. So, so much fun. So if you want to see course on this one it will be on patreon in november 2022 and of course you can do it um, a bit more reduced okay a little bit more tasteful like a designer would do it with some uh, different materials so you don't have to go crazy like this one i mean this is pretty dark but you can keep it more friendly but just overall the simulation tools are so powerful right now and i just love it I need to mention one more thing because I think it's just a crazy offer because right now you will still get on my Patreon the Marble Run Master Kit with 200 elements. All of these elements, blocks, rails, slopes, catchers, spirals, more spirals, curves, angles and crossings for free. So you will get a promo download code for my Gumroad and then you get all of these beautiful assets. They come with different surface details. So you get the low poly version, a medium version, high version, and these ultra rest versions with surface details. And just look at these beautiful sculpted edges. I sculpted all of this in Cinema 4D and yeah, you can just build crazy artworks with it. So I use this intensively on my Instagram to do all of these beautiful renderings. And I also used it for commercial work. And I think it's just a really strong asset kit. So as I said, on my Patreon, you will get the download code for the Gumroad kit. And normally you would pay 94 euros for it. But as I said, right now, still, when you become a Patreon on my Patreon 3D Bonfire, then you will get this for free if you subscribe to the Knights tier. All right. You will also get some free stuff there. So if you need some really cool wallpapers, then you will get all of these ones for free. Okay. So I share all of these wallpapers for for ultra wide monitors in this resolution and you can also download it for 4k monitors maybe some of them are a bit too wild but i thought hey this could be a nice giveaway all right so i think i already talked too much here so let's dive into cinema 4d and i will show you the basics of the cloth transformation effect all right finally in cinema 4d and i think we can just slow down a little bit so the introduction was quite fast because i wanted to talk about cool stuff on patreon i have to apologize if that was boring so now i think it is time to get to the cool stuff so i just grab a plane and a figure and i just do this for a size measurement and this is just a little 
repetition of what I talked about in the last tutorial about simulations, but let me mention this one more time. So when I do simulations with soft bodies and cloth, then I try to work in a reasonable scaling. So for example, I like to work in a scaling like this compared to a human figure. All right, you could also simulate something small like this one. Just be sure that the forces and everything will just react in a different manner to it. You could, of course, also simulate something big like this, like a, like a balloon or something. But again, be careful because the turbulence field and all of the forces, they will just react differently to huge objects like this one. All right, so now we have this out of our way. We can decide on an object that we want to turn into cloth with this beautiful effect, okay? So you could do it with a sphere, for example, something like this. And then I would say you switch this one to maybe hexahedron. So you will get beautiful quads all over the place, okay? So you could do the simulation with something like this, but I think we can do something more interesting. All right, and because tomorrow is Halloween, I decided to do this one with a pumpkin, all right? So I fired up the Quixel Bridge and if you still don't know what the Quixel Bridge is, uh, then you should maybe do some research on it because this is an amazing tool for high resolution assets, textures, decals, plants, and all of the good stuff, okay? So I think this is pretty much an essential tool. And if you don't have it so far, then think about it again. So as I said, I want to do this tutorial with a pumpkin because tomorrow is Halloween and you can see all of these beautiful assets. I mean, don't know what this has to do with a pumpkin. <laughs> All right, so I think I want to do it, for example, with this one. So I would just download and export it. So I already downloaded it. This is why I can already export it to Cinema 4D. And when I go back into my scene, then you can see the plugin did its magic in the background and I have this pumpkin in my scene. Now I can see that this pumpkin is really, really small. So this is why I just want to scale this one up to maybe something like this. This is just my taste, how I like it. You can, of course, keep your simulation a little bit smaller, but I think I want to have something like this one. All right, so for now I want to get rid of the figure and the plane to just focus on my object. And you can see, you can download your assets from the Quixel Bridge in different level of detail levels. This one is level zero, and I think this already has quite a lot of polygons, but honestly for simulations, this is not so much. So maybe I would just go to poly mode, control A to select everything. You can see this one has 4,500 polygons. So this is already a high amount of polygons, but honestly, when we want to do simulations, we need more polygon edges and polygons to have more resolution in our simulation. So I think a good idea is to just select your object, open up this menu, go to remesher, hold down alt and put it into a remesh. Now you can see the remesh did its magic and you have quads all over the place, which is already preferable to something like this one. I mean, you can also do a simulation with a resolution pattern like this one, but honestly, I just love quads and the simulation will be just cleaner. Of course, now you will get some crazy stretching in the texture. And this is because the materials that come with the object, they come with UV maps and the UV map is relying on the polygon pattern here. And if you mess this one up, then of course also this will mess up your texture. But honestly, for now, I don't really care about it. I just want to have more resolution in this object. So for example, I could put this one to 500 and then pretty soon I will have five times the amount of polygons and still the object looks amazing. So I think I can even put this one to maybe 800. Let's just see how this is looking. Yes, I like it. I think I still want to have more polygons because I just like to have more resolution in my object. So I put this one even to 1500 and I think this is good for now. So I would just duplicate this one, make this one invisible, click on this one, press C, get this one out of the hierarchy. I don't know what this one is. Okay, let's kill this one. Let's delete this one and let's just call this one pumpkin. All right, and now it is time to think about the simulation. What do we want to do here? So we want to have something like an infection. Maybe it will start here or there. I don't know. Let's just say it will start here and then it will grow over the object in an interesting pattern. And wherever the infection is, 
this object will no more no longer be rigid but it will turn into cloth so hopefully that was understandable so yeah let's just do it not not just talk about it so i will right click on the pumpkin go to simulation tags and i will just pin this menu here and put a cloth tag onto my pumpkin all right so far so good i also want to have a force in my scene so we can go to simulation forces and i will also pin the menu here and I want to have turbulence. I want to have a turbulence with a strength of maybe 20 and a scale of five. Let's just see what will happen in my scene. Okay, and there you have it. Uh, just press NA to get rid of the lines. This looks already quite crazy. So maybe the turbulence can be a bit bigger. So put this one to 30 and the strength of five. Let's just more or less invert these settings. All right, let's just see. So you can see the turbulence is taking over. In my case, this is already a bit slow, but this is just because I already put quite a high resolution into my mesh, all right? So maybe you can do it with a lower resolution mesh. I can also show you the same animation with um, less polygons. So maybe let's just go here, put this one again into a remesher and let's put this one to 20. And there you would have a low resolution pumpkin. Put this one out. Call this one pumpkin low and I would just drag the cloth tag onto this object and I just want to show you that this one is faster. So I would go to the high resolution object, click on it and disable the cloth tag and now hopefully this will be pretty fast. Okay and you can see that um, this one is floating. It looks nice. Maybe the turbulence can be bigger. Put this one to 10. All right and the scaling maybe to 15. Let's see it one more time. Yeah, something like this. So it doesn't really matter for now, but I just wanted to show you that this one will be way faster. But now I will switch back to my high resolution object. So I will click on this one, disable this one, enable the high resolution object again, make the low res pumpkin invisible. And let me just see the effect one more time. All right, and I think I really like this one. Okay, this is beautiful, but we don't want to have the whole element already as cloth but as I said we want to have something like an infection and wherever the infection is this element will no longer be rigid but it will turn into cloth. So let's just do this one and the magic trick behind the effect is the vertex map. So I will create a vertex map and now this will be all red but this is not what we want. We want to use fields with it. And then we can go to the fields menu. And for example, to keep this one really simple, you could have something like a linear field, All right? I just want to show you how this is working. So this is the linear field. Half of it is now rigid and half of it, we want to have it as a cloth simulation. But for now, I think this will still be the same as before because we need to say, where do we want to use this vertex map? And we can use the vertex map in different parameters in the whole cloth system. And one parameter, which is pretty much essential, will be in the mix animation. I will go more into detail on that stuff in other tutorials, maybe on my Patreon. But for now, let's just say you can use the pins or the force to say, hey, object, you don't react to cloth at all or you be a total cloth object all right so for example when i put this one to 100 then i guess there will be no cloth animation anymore i mean it will still calculate as cloth but this is like it's pinned to its position and it can't move as cloth all right but now you can use a map here and therefore when you use the vertex map in this map field then half of it will have an effect of 100 and the other half will have an effect of zero. So now hopefully this will work and you can see that the effect of the cloth is only here. All right, so this is already a pretty essential part of the magic trick, but I think this is super boring because we want to have it like an infection, okay? So how can we do that? I think we can just go to the vertex map and kill the linear feed for now. And I also want to delete it here. Let's go back into the vertex map and maybe we want to start with a spherical field. All right, put this one to 10. And now I just want to move it somewhere, maybe here. All right, or maybe I want to start at the bottom. That could be also quite interesting. So I would just start here. All right, so now I guess not a lot will happen. 
all right? Because now the influence is only in this small area here. But what is awesome about the vertex map and the freeze object here is that you can grow your infection starting from this point, for example. So now I would just click on this one, set the mode to grow. And now hopefully this should grow from this point and it will infect the whole object. And you can see wherever the infection is, this object will no longer be rigid, but it will turn into a cloth object. But I can already see that the infection is happening quite rapidly. So you can reduce this one if you reduce the radius. So I think this is just a radius outgoing from this point where it can detect new areas which it can infect. So I would just reduce the radius to 3 and maybe the effect to 50. And now hopefully the growing will happen more gently. All right, you can see 23 frames and it is still growing. And as I said, it's already a bit slow, but this is just because we have already a quite high resolution object here. But now when I get out of this mode, you can see that the pumpkin is rigid here and down here it is turning into a cloth object. So I think this is still pretty boring and maybe we can make the turbulence bigger. So I could say the strength is 30, for example. Let's just see this one more time. So it is growing and now turbulence will be more, more crazy here. All right, so this is already quite interesting, but I think it's not interesting enough, okay? So let's just optimize this. So what can we do here? Obviously, you could make the pattern here more interesting. So right now, this is just growing more or less linear, but this can be way more interesting with a noise in it. And I can show you how to do that, but maybe I will do this on Patreon. So I don't want to make this tutorial too long and I think I will do this in a longer version on Patreon. So for now, I think this is okay, but I want to maybe just have an influence on different parameters here. So not only do we want to use the vertex map to adjust from rigid to cloth, but also we could say the cloth here will be inflated, for example, or this will get really long and stretchy here. So for example, you could go to your surface and just say the target length will be 150. In the vertex map in this area, the whole object will just be longer. So every polygon will just stretch out and there will just be more material to play with. And let's just see how this will look. So now you can see at the same time that the cloth is taking over, this also gets longer and more stretchy. All right, so there's just way more material, I would say. It's, it's just It just gets longer. And when you put this one to 200, then this will already be, yeah, just really crazy. Okay, I just want to see it. All right, I like it. And of course, you can make this edge more smooth in the vertex map. So there are different ways to blend this one more gently. But as I said, I don't want to make the YouTube tutorial too long. So for now, this is just fine. But maybe I just want to say in my global settings in the simulation, I already deactivated the gravity. But when I put this one back to its default state, then maybe this will look like it's melting and it will just drop down. All right, because the gravity has an effect towards the floor. Okay, this is also quite interesting, but I think I want to keep this one at zero and just have the turbulence effect here. But anyway, I think this is already quite interesting. We can make it even more interesting. So let's go into the cloth object. And for example, let's say the whole thing will have a balloon effect. So wherever it is turning into cloth, the cloth also has an overpressure on it. And now probably you will get some crazy inflated bubbles and stuff. Let's just see this. Okay, so this is crazy. And you can see now we have a lot of inflation here. I think it's too much. So I want to go back to it and maybe keep this one at one. Let's see this one more time. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's okay. Maybe I just continue here and you can see that now the rigid object will turn into cloth and look at this beautiful movement here. So a lot of cool stuff is happening here and there is so much potential. You can also use the vertex map in your material to blend, for example, from the pumpkin material 
into a glass material or a metallic material. So maybe I can also show you this one. Hopefully the tutorial will not get too long, but let me just fire up Octane and just really quickly show you how you can blend between different materials here with the power of the vertex map. So I would just fire this one up and let's keep this one really short. All right, so I just use a basic light setup with an HDRI. All right, and I put my pumpkin into a subdivision surface because without it, you will have these ugly edges, but with it, you will get a perfectly clean pumpkin, cloth pumpkin. All right, now it is time to blend between two materials and there are different options in Octane and also in Redshift. So it's, it's more or less the same. So you need something like a mix material. So you can do it the old way with the mix material or use a composite material, but I will use the mix one, for example. So I fire up the mix material, go to the node editor and you can see I'm blending between material one and two with flow texture. So this is not how we want to do it. We want to do it with a vertex map. So I would just drag it here, put the vertex map into the amount and in the vertex map, I will just place our vertex. Okay, so this is already set up. The first material will be the pumpkin. So I move it into my scene, click it out to arrange and get it a bit out of the way here with like this. So the pumpkin can be material one and the other material could be just an octane material, put it here, drag it into material two. And let's just say the second one will be a metallic, for example. Let's just see how this will look. So on our pumpkin, now we want to have the mix material on it. Just drag it over here and maybe deactivate the subdivision surface for now. And let's just do the simulation one more time. So Okay, it's, it looks like it's the wrong way around. So I will go back into my mix material and let's say the pumpkin is material two and the white material will be one. Okay, this is better. And the second one, let's just say you're not white, but you are blue. Okay, so this is not the most interesting transformation here, but let's just let this play back a couple of frames. And now you can see that the pumpkin is turning into something with the blue material. All right, I will just let it play a little bit further, just a bit more, but you can see that this has so much potential. Of course, you have to make sure that the the pattern in which this is growing will be just more interesting. So for now we have this more or less like a linear division from from the infected area to the not infected area. But of course you can let this one grow with the noise. And I will also show you this in a more extended version of this tutorial probably. So this is what we are doing here. So let's just go into this material and maybe switch it to a specular material. Okay, so not sure about this one. Let's give it some roughness. Okay, so this is not the most beautiful rendering here, but I just want you to know that this has a lot of potential. If you art direct it in a good manner and just make it beautiful. So for now we have this transition from the pumpkin into this crazy material here with a little bit of color transmission. Let's activate the subdivision one more time. And this has definitely so much possibilities. So when I go back to my Pure board, then you can see that more or less I did the same with a chair. So the infection is growing over the chair. But for example, I have a way more interesting growing pattern in my cloth morph effect. And when I check the animation one more time, then you can definitely see that that helps quite a lot to have an interesting growing pattern. And of course, beautiful lighting, beautiful materials, a beautiful object. And when you have everything beautiful, then the end result will be hopefully amazing. All right. So as I said, these are the basics of this effect. Maybe I will do a more in-depth version on my Patreon. But for now, thank you so much for your time on YouTube. I hope you can make something awesome with it. And it would be amazing if you follow my channel, if you like the tutorial, ring the bell, um, write a comment, follow me on Instagram, Patreon, whatever. So just be sure to make something awesome with the technique. All right. Thank you so much for your time. See you next time. Bye everyone.